Welcome to the seventh Synergy Speaker Series. We have another wonderful guest, uh, Ms. Hills is here to speak with Hills Petty is here to speak with all of our, uh, our guests today. And um, her topic is collaboration with peers. In addition to that, she's gonna tell um, her own personal story, which is a fantastic one. She's had a lot of different jobs in East Hartford. Many of you in the room, many of the students who will ultimately watch this, knew Ms. Hills as the technology teacher at Sunset Ridge. And so she's had many different positions, done a fabulous job in all of them, and now is doing a great job as a principal, second year as a principal. So she's gonna to talk to you a little bit and, and help you get more ready for uh, life after high school. So we'll turn the floor over to Ms. Hills. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Hills. Um, and as Dr. Aho said, I'm the principal currently at Pinkin School. So when he asked me to speak, I kind of tried to put myself back in high school and where I was when I was in high school, which kind of is a scary thought sometimes. And uh, I thought about a message that I wanted to send and um, what might be meaningful to you guys. So I, I guess my first question that popped into my head was thinking about who you are right now, sitting in this room. And I thought back to who I was when I was in high school and people used to come in and lecture us and talk to us about you know our futures and things like that. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I failed to do when I was your age was to think about who I wanted to be and where I wanted to go. Um, because when I was your age in high school, I used to sit in the back of the room. I was a little Asian girl that sat in the back of the room with her head down and prayed that nobody would call on her and hope that none of the people that were around her actually started a conversation because I was very shy and didn't really ever want to speak to anybody. Um, I was, everyone kind of assumed, because I'm Asian, she must be good at math. And little did they know that I had failed seventh grade algebra and had to repeat it in my eighth grade year because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I just kind of want you to think about while I'm here, like who are you? Not only who are you right now, but where do you see yourself being? Because if somebody had told me when I was 16 years old that I'd be leading a school and having to lead PD or talk in front of a group of people, I probably would have told them they were nuts. So I know sometimes it's easy to get bogged down in, well, this is where I am and you know who cares about the future, but that's the piece that I wish someone had told me. I wish someone had said to me, don't only think about who you are now, but think about where you wanna go and who you wanna be. Um, so, I mean, and I'm a lot of different things. I'm a mom, which I also never thought I would be. I have a four-year-old son. Um, I'm a daughter, um, but at my heart, I'm a teacher. And that is something if people, if I'm out and people ask me, if you guys had walked up to me and said, you know, who are you, what do you do? That's what I am. I'm a teacher at heart. And the sign on my door says principal, but it's, you can be more than one thing. You can never lose who you are and who you truly believe you are. And I think that's, that would be my message too, is like, find out who you are Think about where you want to be and who you want to be and then go for it and and don't let anybody tell you differently because when I failed seventh grade math my my math teacher literally sat there and told me you'll be lucky to make it through high school math and now I'm kind of ironically Dr. Outhouse and I are the two people in the town that people tend to ask questions to about math and data and crunching numbers so I also want you to think how you'll get there um, and I still ask myself that every day. How will I get there? How will I be a better mother? How will I be a better daughter? How will I be a better student? Because I'm still in college, even though I'm really old. Um, but I realize that I am the only one that can make that determination. I'm the only one that can make that choice to every day come into my job and do my best. There's nobody else. 50 million adults could walk up to me and say, you should do this, or you should do that. You should change this about the school. You should treat this person differently, but I'm the only one that I know in the end has that. And that doesn't change whether you're 16, 17, 15, or I'm not gonna tell you my age because that will be embarrassing, or if you're as old as I am. It, it really doesn't change. So I want you to look around the school and look at your friends and, and the topic's supposed to be peer conversations and think about who you're hanging out with and what you're doing and do those peer conversations raise you up 
or do they bring you down? Because I don't know about these two gentlemen, but even to this day, there's adults, there's friends I have that I hang around with and you get to the end of the conversation and you're like, wow, I just feel really bad or I'm not as optimistic as I wanted to be. And there's people that I hang around with and they energize me and they make me feel better and they make me feel like I can do anything. So, and that's a choice and that's getting to know yourself and having conversations with people and not just through texting. My mom actually yells at me on a daily basis because I'd rather text her from the other side of the house than get up and walk over and have a conversation. Not that I know any of you know what that feels like. Nothing? No? You don't text? Never. I never, never. see no. mm -hmm. So that was pretty much my thought process around I just was Snapchat. kind of thinking. <laughs> yes, Snapchat. <laughs> I think I've seen more pictures of my niece on Instagram than I have actually in person, seeing her in person. So, you know, I know more about her outfits and her life through that than I do through actually spending time with her, sadly enough. So that's something to think about too. But so when we talk, so um, some of the people in the room, uh, when we were talking, giving announcements, and, and this week's guest really wanted to be in the room. Tiana, I remember you saying how bad, how much you admired uh, Ms. Hills as your teacher and how excited you were to kind of be in here. Uh, collaboration with peers is the topic, and there isn't a better collaborator than Ms. Hills. So I first met Ms. Hills when she um, was actually doing an in-service at a different school that I worked in. Came in, and we were a tough crowd walking in, and, and she knew a few faces in the room but absolutely did a fabulous job. And uh, we left that PD actually wanting to stay and get more information. She was collaborating with everyone, people she didn't know, people who she didn't know, but trying to help everyone get better. Then fast forward to a couple years later, I was assistant principal at Sunset Ridge for a year. Uh, this was the guru um, for everything. And so, uh, you know, the stats whiz um, across the building, helping to figure out what uh, students should be where, always was the person who people would ask a question for and, and, and staff from the gym teacher from the teachers who were on her team all loved working with her because she listened and, and was a very good collaborator and so you guys next week will talk about collaboration there's there's two parts to it there is the actual talking piece but there's also the listening piece so folks in the room have had her as a teacher and, and maybe folks in the room some have not but as you prepare for next week, what are some questions you might have for about, I'm telling you, this is one of the best collaborators we have. Pick her brain while you can and, and ask her some questions so that next week and beyond, you can take some of the things that she does really well and, and bring them into your uh, skill set. Oh, you want to ask questions? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for him to say it. But, um, um, I guess my question is, what what have you done to like improve the district in a better way while collaborating she said well i would say one of the first things that i did was the actually the pd that uh dr alice was talking about as i said like i'm not a very outgoing person or i i don't seem i, I don't feel that i am so while he's talking about that pd i was scared to death that day to go in there i knew him a little bit and i knew like maybe two other people so I think going out on a limb and pushing yourself in that respect, and, and I've tried to do that more. Like I purposely kind of put myself in some uncomfortable situations um, in doing PD and stuff with the district because that that's helped to make it better. I was scared to death to come here, honestly, and speak in front of you. Had I known I was being videotaped, I might have backed out, but, um, but no, like just stretching yourself. <laughs> So, so taking risks, taking chances is definitely a big piece of collaboration. You don't always know as much as you want to, but being confident, taking a leadership role, getting information from other people. So, so one of the things about Ms. Hills, if you don't know her yet, she'll always be asking questions, always trying to find new information. And so as you're collaborating and, and, and successful employees um, do this regularly, Ms. Hills talked about some of her friends and, and colleagues. Listen, any, any job or organization you're part of, you're gonna have people who are very positive, and you're gonna have people who do know what's wrong and have a complaint, but they don't have a solution. 
And so one of the things I admire about Ms. Hills is, is she always is looking for that solution and, and collaboration is her vessel for, for finding that, that um, answer. When she took over at, as principal, the first thing she did was actually talk to every single staff member to get their insight, collaborating with everybody. Why do you think she did that? Um, Building relations. Okay. Um, I heard that it may, it may not be so true, but I heard that um, and within five years, a teacher may quit because they're not heard mm -hmm. by um, the principal and um, they feel like so like left out in the fact that they're not being heard because this can actually help either students and help themselves and also probably principal themselves. So, on that. so right now we have a small group but have you ever been in a classroom where you just sat in the back and didn't say anything, but you had something important to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, there's one strategy. So, so by actually talking to everybody, was anybody not heard? Did any, could any teacher go home and, and talk to their husband or wife or, or um, friend and, and say, you know what? My principal doesn't care about what I think. Yeah. They could, but if she met with them, is that a valid uh, thing for them to say? No. no. So, I have a question listening to you answer your questions to see what Ms. Hills thinks. So I heard some of you say that sometimes you sat in the back of a room and you have a question and you didn't ask it. Why not? I'd be shy. Yeah. yeah. Nah, it's not shy, it's more like fear. Well, it's not fear, it's like, you just, yeah, it is fear. It's like, <laughs> exactly. you don't want to be judged because you don't want to sound stupid. Or like if you get the answer wrong. Yeah. Everybody laugh at you. Yeah. So listening to Miss Hills, what would you say now? Tomorrow, or I should say Tuesday, when you're back in class and you have a question. Want my cup of coffee? Um. <laughs> Still on that cup of coffee. Nice try. <laughs> Graduation day. It's on? No, on you record. said Tuesday. I said Monday. But, but. Well, there's no school, so we said we push it to Tuesday. Uh, ah, <laughs> details. See, listening is a part of collaboration too. Huh? Question for you though. You're sitting in class on Tuesday and you have a question and you're not really comfortable about asking it. After hearing Ms. Hills, what do you think she would tell you to do? Pull the no, teacher she, to the side. If you're right, say it again. Pull the teacher to the side. Okay, that's one thing. Or just be brave and ask. Okay. And possibly ask, like talk to them after class. Okay, good. And why, what from her story makes you want to do that? Because you don't want to fail, you want to like, be able to understand what the teacher's teaching you. Find out about yourself if you are that brave. And, and what what Miss Hills just did very bravely is admit something that most people don't. I fell in class. I didn't do well in this class, and, and I learned from that. You know that was there was some collaboration with that teacher to fix it. There was some negative collaboration. We've all had adults who have told us something that you're not going to amount to nothing. You're you're not going to get this done. You're that job, you can't get it. But the question is, how are you gonna take that information? You can blast them, you can get in their face. Does that usually work out? No, I've tried that too, it doesn't work. <laughs> and then when you go into the workforce, if you guys don't already have jobs, it doesn't work there either, to be honest with you. I'd rather know, and honestly, the collaboration piece with everybody that I work with, I pop in classrooms every day. I stop people on the way out, I see people on the way in, and that's, I find out more in my two minute conversations with them about their weekends or about what they did last night or about a kid in their class that might be struggling in reading or writing or math. I find out more in those two minute collaboration conversations than if I sat at a PD all day with them next to them where we're listening to somebody else speak. Like that collab, I can't tell you how important that that is even on a casual level to just be able to have a conversation, make yourself approachable. Um, and listening. Dr. Alice talked about that. It's just listening. Sometimes somebody's going to come in and they just need to vent and say something. And even if it's not the most respectful thing, listen first and then say, and, and state your case and say, you know, this is how this made me feel. And I'm wondering if this is how I should have taken it and having that communication. Other questions, and it could be related to stuff we've talked about. It could be unrelated as long as it ties back into our above and beyond. As long as it ties into thinking about your future. Um, so like, I used to, and so in freshman year, I used, in freshman year before that, 
Um, I used to always just like, I would get my work done. And how we were saying like, being brave enough to even talk to the teacher, like ask what's going on. Like maybe um, you got sidetracked uh, for a quick second and you missed like a whole section or whatever. Um, I, I wouldn't like ask because I have, I have ADHD. So I feel like, I've, um, I feel like there's like kind of no need to ask me, although it's really important to do so. But I used to like never really ask like um, for help or um, um, like what did you say again? Because I felt like I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be like something stupid that's gonna go on. Like maybe someone's gonna say a comment in the background, and say like, "Oh, you're stupid," or um, judge me on like was. Um, like how I am so I ended up changing that because of like I'm thinking about more of my future because I want to be a marine I want to actually succeed in life and I want to get this work done I want to get my credits I want to pass and everything so um, I changed a lot from not asking to actually being brave enough to go out to the teacher and tell her what's what's the conversation what's going on the interaction about. Awesome. See, you should be sure enough, too. Yes. How does it feel to be a principal now? How does it feel? That was not everybody's mind, right? <laughs> um, honestly, I miss the classroom. I miss... I do! I do! I miss having... You guys know how much. I mean, I love being That's your own secretary in a classroom. <laughs> Huh? Got your own secretary now. Yeah. Yeah. Answering your phone calls. Uh -huh. Get your lunch. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, you supposed to get you lunch? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean I like it. I, I get to know I get to know three hundred and fifty kids instead of just twenty kids. Um, so that's that's great. And I would say I love collaborating with the kids. I love going in and, and sitting in a classroom and hanging out. Um, whenever I need like a perk in my day, I go to kindergarten. Who used to scare me to death? I'm not gonna lie to you. Like you walk in and then there's 20 of them all of a sudden, like right there. So, um, but I've gotten used to that now. I've gotten better at you know managing them. Uh, but I do. I love that piece. I love being able to know lots of different kids. And just like when I was at Sunset, when I was the tech teacher, I had the best of both worlds there because I got to know everybody, but I got to teach too. So. Good. Any other questions? No. Add any questions? So I guess, what are you guys going to do now to collaborate with your peers in class? So I see you guys on a daily basis. <laughs> we have activities that we do. How can you take the information that you learn from Ms. Knowles and then incorporate it into, let's say, class? On, I, for some of you who had me today, there was an activity. How can you learn from the information she gave and incorporate it in? into activities like we did today? Um, being more open to different activities that were like 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 group bonding type activities. Okay, so being more open, okay. Mm -hmm. Ashley, yeah. Is the voice calling on me? Yeah. Um, volunteering more. Volunteering more. Speaking up, okay, taking that chance. Okay, group being discussion. a little more brave. Yeah. Uh, What's uh, group discussions you. and uh -uh. So projects. I get mad. <laughs> you a very angry person, I'm but um, group the such the, uh, Discussion. group discussions. Yeah. I have a question. How do you handle it? And I just I I run into this with adults. I don't know if Dr. Ahaus does, but how do you handle it when you're having a collaboration session and you're going back and forth and somebody does disagree with something that you said and it's kind of weirder for us because everybody's always like, well, you're the boss, so whatever you say, we'll just do it. Okay. But that's not collaboration. To me. So how do you deal with a situation like that? Because that's never gonna change. I, I still get in arguments with my mother, and I'm old, I live with her. Well, we live together. We live together. <laughs> They're just probably sitting, oh wow, she's real good. She still lives with her mother. Um, but how do you handle, how would you handle that? Or how can I help you or give you advice or help you with that? Because that has been probably one of the toughest things if you talk about being a principal, where people say stuff and it's like, you can, I totally disagree with it, and but I've got to handle it in a way that's still respectful, that still respects boundaries, that still, you know, is not going to get me in trouble um, or escalate the situation. So how, how do you feel? 
Um, I think you should meet the person in the middle, like. Try like, to compromise? Yeah, compromise yeah. with them. I was looking for the word in my head, but I couldn't get it. Is it okay to disagree to disagree? Yeah, it's your own well, opinion. Yeah, but sometimes if you if no. like if you're walking with people that are like like in a school, they're not gonna like that and they're gonna be like, Oh, she's out. Yeah, they're just gonna talk junk about you. And and I agree. And I'm sure there's people that say stuff about even as adults. So that's that's where I think comes into yeah. like knowing who you are and knowing that there's all there may always be somebody that says something, but if you know who you are and you're confident in that, then I'll tell you it makes it a lot easier. So we're running out of time, so I want to make sure we give uh, Miss Hills the proper round of applause. You want one more quick one? One more quick one. All right, let's one do quick that. Quick. Hold um, applause. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so if you have like an argument with like another teacher. Like, how do you solve that? Oof, this could be on yeah. the deleted scenes. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually don't argue. I try to find, like, that happy medium. And I've actually had instances in both my personal life and my professional life that if we can't come to an agreement, then I do. I actually use the words. You know what? At this time, I don't think that either one of us is going to get what we need out of this. So I need to agree to disagree with you at the moment and we'll revisit it at a later time. And sometimes just that time, because I don't know about you guys, but if I leave a situation and I have, you know, my car ride home or 20 minutes to think about it, I get a lot of a different perspectives and thoughts going through my head and I get to process whatever the other person was saying so that I can go back and be more level headed. And I, I do have a temper outside of in my personal life, or I don't. I actually don't in my professional life. But if you ask my husband, it's, he's seen my temper. Um, and walking away. Sometimes the best thing to do is just walk away. If you know that it's going to go someplace that it shouldn't go, just walking away is probably the best advice. And respectfully saying, at this time, I need to disagree with you. I, I agree to disagree, and we'll come back to it at a later point. A round of applause. Oh my God, Brandon.